It does. Yeah. But the lantern. Pop pop. But the lantern. Pop pop. Wait, what, oh, what is that? But the Pop pop. You know the show? Oh, the Adams family. No. Yes, it is. Adams family. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, no, this is the uh, the girl that uh, she was uh, real rich and she went out uh, on the farm with the oh, farmer Oh, the Beverly Hillbillies. No. Oh, that's a good song too. Uh, old Uncle Jim. That backstory. They da, sing the backstory. Da, 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 da. Barely kept his family Never fed. Dead. Then and one day he was shooting, shooting at some food. Does he say food? I think so. It's Up from the ground comes a bubbling crude. Crude, okay. Oil it is. Black, Black gold. gold. Texas, Texas tea. tea. Well, the first thing you know, okay, old Jed's a millionaire. Let's, let's cut it off there. Took his family we'll off. We'll be right back. <laughs> Nobody's going to write in the comments. Please, Scott, keep singing. <laughs> I would, though. That's what I'm trying to do. You do sound good. Amen, amen. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. It's good to have you with us today. It's good to have you with us. And we got an incredible show today for you. Uh, scripture for your day. We're going to pray over your day. And uh, we're in your, your, your teaching this weekend. And I, I really like it. Kind of shaking it off. Mm -hmm. Kind of just shaking it off. It reminded me of Dad's old joke with the donkey. Yeah. Remember he fell down in the well. Go ahead, tell the story. The donkey the fell, fell down in the well. well, and the old farmer couldn't get him up, and so finally he thought he was going to bury him. So he'd throw a shovel full of dirt down in there, and the donkey would shake it off and stomp on the ground and throw some more. And before long, the donkey just walked out of the well. Yeah. And this is how I think oftentimes in today, can I say in today's culture, I want to say in today's uh, culture, um, it's the most offendable culture I've ever seen in my life. It, it's yeah. unlike, like when we grew up in the 80s and we've had this conversation, uh, we were tough. We had to be tough skinned. We had to have thick skin because there was no conversations about bullying or not bullying in those days. Right. And so everybody bullied everybody. When you're short you, with glasses, you, you got made have fun a, of, you right. got teased to the, you know. And Your own friends. So you had really, <laughs> I think you learned to have some thick skin. I'm not saying that was good. I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying it was different. But I think that it's the thick skin helps me today in the level I am because um, even though we live in a land where everybody wants to be uh, make sure that you don't offend, people still there's still like I there's not a Sunday that goes by, not one Sunday that on the way out somebody comes up and goes, oh man, you're short. Not one Sunday goes by. Yeah. Now if I if I didn't just it doesn't it never it doesn't bother me. Yeah. It's not bothering but me. But you could get offended. Day. Of course you can. Right? I, you can get offended I could about go, anything. I could go, oh, okay, well, you have big ears. And we could all play this. Like, you say we could all play this game. You know what I'm saying? Like you, Thanks, Dumbo. Yeah. <laughs> can you flap around with that? Because isn't that what we did in high school, though? In high school, we learned. I'm oh, very good. You learned I'm, with a comeback. You had to have a comeback ready to go. I, I make grown men cry back yeah. in high school. Because you could bully. You knew it a bully. Because well, you'd yeah. been bullied. And I, but I, I would never start it. It would be like somebody come up and they would say something. I'm like, oh, I didn't know we were doing that. But I think I think the key in, in, in our Christianity is to know who we are in Christ yes. so that when people attack us, reject us, just, when they uh, persecute us, criticize us, you're always going to have people who speak against you that even though you have the favor of God in your life, there's going to be people who don't like you. And every one of us has been in a situation where you posted something online and then here comes the comments. Wow. And, and the hatred, even uh, something I posted once, hey, God wants you to have a great drive on the road of life. Yeah. And and then there was somebody who posted right underneath that, God doesn't want everyone to have a great drive on life. Uh, you know, some people are going to have a lot of trouble, Pastor, and it's pastors like you uh -huh. who, who are causing hey, people just... to have some sort of dream Christianity that doesn't exist. I was like, wow, like what an attack, right? But you just have to learn that when people come at you, like he just didn't understand what I was saying. Right. My job isn't to hate on him, to be mad at him, to but my him. job is to just shake off the criticism and the rejection, to remember who God says that I am and keep going in life. And, the, and, didn't, and Jesus Told, get, kind of told us to do this, thanks. Yeah. And then our scripture. Well, he told the disciples when you when you go to a city and they reject you and they, they want nothing to do with you, then as you're leaving, shake the dust off your feet. Which means, and me and Holly were, and literally, I told you this, we were literally talking about this today, is that when somebody gives you rejection, they give it to you. They say, yeah. oh yeah, you blah, 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 blah. She, she was talking about how you don't have to grab it and take it with you. Yeah. You don't have to, you just go, oh, no, th no thank you. No thank you. You know what I'm saying? Somebody tries to give me a, a plate of cauliflower, I go, Okay. Thanks, but no thanks. You I don't. May, you may think I need that. But I don't I, have to eat it. I don't have to. I thank you, but no thank you for that. And the same thing with rejection comments. And and what you have to realize is is the in order to go up higher, you have to be able to take because 
Every, it, the higher you go, isn't it true, the more rejection you're going to get? Joel Osteen is the nicest guy in the world trying to change the world, yeah. and he's the most rejected person on the planet. Jesus, so people are like, well, you know, blah, There's blah, blah. There's entire, people dedicate entire websites to hating him. But like, Jesus, that's a lot of work, like to go onto Weebly and create a website to hate someone. But they're like, well, there must be something wrong with Joel if he's getting that. I've heard pastors say, if he's getting that kind of rejection, there must be something wrong. I go, well, Jesus Christ. <laughs> people said the same thing about Jesus. Jesus Christ got criticized if, so far that he got... Crucified. If they hated him that much, there must be something wrong with him. Well, no. He loved perfectly. He loved perfectly, and they killed him for it. And they killed him for it. And so you have to realize that, that as you go up in life, that criticism is going to come. But what happens is if we don't learn to shake it off at this level, mm -hmm. God's like, I can't take you there because this will destroy you. He I said, can't, and I can't even get to the next place no. if I'm carrying the weight of the old. And, and it's so good, Jason. When I say shake it off, uh, dusting the, the it means letting it go too right you know you can't just be like well that doesn't bother me i'm gonna keep going but then you're mad at that person uh -huh. you thank you jason you know when you carry that anger of what you heard into your home that day when you when you get home maybe you never even left because of what's going on maybe, but you carry that anger of what happened now it's affecting your relationships at home it's affecting your ability to think about what you're going to do tomorrow yeah. or to uh, you can't seem to get to the next place in life until you can get there mentally. And you can't get there mentally until you learn how to let go, just love people, don't be mad at them, pray for those who persecute you, but you've gotta shake the rejection off. You gotta shake off the regrets in life. You gotta shake off the unforgiveness. You have right. to learn how to shake off the bitterness so that you can go to the next place. I was listening to, I think it was John Maxwell, where he was, he was talking about how you have a certain amount of bandwidth in your mind. Mm -hmm. And so if you give up, like you got like this much, then this is your creative spot. This is the stuff where you got great ideas, mm -hmm. and this is where you can just navigate greatly through relationships and stuff. But if you use that much of it up for rejection, use that much of it up for unforgiveness and for bitterness and stuff, now I only got this little bitty amount of bandwidth that I can use to be able to create for my day. And what, what, a lot of times what we're creating is what I could have said. <laughs> I, I do that all the time, too. Or what I'm going to say. For a moment. Like somebody cuts me off and stuff and they I'm do a, something. I'm gonna, here's what I'm going to say. Right. This is what I, I would have said this. I'm going to show them. Yeah. And so, so you spend all this mental energy about what you could have said, what you would have done. What, what you, I'll do next. When I see him. I'm and gonna, that mental energy could be could be creating your future. Thank you. You could be using that mental energy to get you to the next place. And right. So this is what Satan wants to do. He wants to distract you with the naysayers. He wants to derail you mentally and emotionally so he can keep you stuck. And you just can't do it. You have to learn how to just love people, pray for those who persecute, forgive, let it go, and keep moving. I remember I was, there was something that happened. I remember, uh, but all of a sudden it was just all these comments on, uh, online mm -hmm. just a bunch just a, so attacking and I, and I would just get on there and I would just read it and it would just keep me I would just get so wow so mad because what and you, you eat right? I was just telling you about it and I was going on and you go you know what you could do you go <laughs> Jason goes just stop reading it and I go well, yeah but then I wouldn't know he goes if you don't know it's there what does it matter and I went huh and I stopped reading it and you know what it all of a sudden it doesn't affect me you even said that about the news the other day you're like I don't Get on it. I, yeah, sometimes you just got to turn the news off because it gets so negative. It doesn't matter which voice you're listening to. They're both having all the it. voices. Both, uh, all of, when I say both, CNN and Fox, right? They, they both have an agenda of trying to get you to think the way they think. But you know what I want to do is I want to think the way Jesus thinks. That's the way I want to think. Yeah. And so I just stick to that. And God's got, he's got what's called the good news. It is good news. It's the good news. It, there may be a plague, but no plague will come near my dwelling. It's all good news. It is. It is. <laughs> it's something bad. Storm may be coming, but I'm going to get you through the storm. You'll walk on top of the water. Yeah, he didn't say that the world wasn't falling apart. He said, in this world, you You'll will have, have trouble. trouble. But fear not, I have overcome the world. Right. So that's and be our of savior. good cheer. Oh, be of good cheer. I uh, like being of good cheer. And that's kind of it. Like in, You're going to go out into your workplace, and how many people know that the, you're going to have opposition out there? Mm -hmm. You're going to have coworkers who are going through stuff in their life, and this is the thing. They're going to have stuff in their life, and they're going to put it on you, mm -hmm. right? And they're going to they're gonna put you down, and they're going to take credit for what you've done. 
And you can carry that and that anger and that frustration, but all it does is it weighs you down. Now I can't move and be immobile like I need to be. Mm -hmm. Or I can just simply shake it off and know who I am in Christ Jesus, know that God is my promoter, that God is the one that makes my way, and I can love everyone that comes across my path. You can say something rude to me, but guess what? I'm going to be like Jesus who just loves on you and encourages mm -hmm. you. And you see that all of a sudden God is making you an incredible way. And I'm not weighed down. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Genesis 33 we and verse 4. We haven't got scripture yet? Sorry. Uh, this is Jacob and Esau. You know, they, they had a really tough childhood. They're brothers, but man, they've been fighting literally since they the came womb. out of the womb. In the womb. They, they fought fighting. in the womb. What, what, the, the mom was just like, but Rebecca, she was like, what's going on in my womb? Right. Like, why is this so great? They fought from the womb. Grabbing the leg and they were, it was a battle. So, so uh, they went separate ways because Esau was going to kill Jacob. Yes, he, he, he was going to get his hands on them. They're finally come. They haven't talked. They didn't Facebook. They didn't call each other on the phone and work it out. <laughs> no. Okay. They haven't seen each other in all these years, and they're coming back together to see what's about to happen. And the Bible says in Genesis 33 and verse 4, Then Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And there's this kind of reconciling moment. You know, nobody apologized. Uh -uh. Nobody said they were sorry. They didn't talk it through. Uh, instead, they walked in forgiveness. And notice how it says that, that he ran. I you know, you can't that. run when you're weighed down by the emotions oh, of so rejection and criticism and bitter. You can't. You're not light on your feet. You, and so the picture is there. Look at them running because they're free. And God had supplied both of their needs. God had blessed both of them. And here the relationship comes back together because they had, at some point in the relationship, they had both let it go. And that was the secret of letting it go. And I think there's some people out there watching today. You got... You've been carrying around, and I was going to quickly use the example. Jason is just in the process of moving. And over the time, you had gathered a bunch of junk. How much junk did you end up throwing away? Well, there's several loads, and you probably don't know what a load is, but it was a lot. Let's just say it was a lot of just well, stuff that you're like, oh, why is you open up a box? You're like, why did I keep this? <laughs> right. And I think the same thing is, is you go, well, why am I holding on to this bitterness? Yeah. My God, that happened seven years ago. Why do I have this unforgiveness in me? Why do I have... And right, what a lot of people do is they just box it up and they just move, keep moving it with them. Yeah. And what does it do? It makes you makes your load so much harder to move. And, you're right. Right? Yeah, the more you take with you, the harder it is to move it. And the more likely your new house will look just like your old house. That was what you, I wanted to get you to get to. Yeah. You don't want the new if house... If you take everything with you, then you get to the new house and you know, it looks the same as the old one. You're like, oh, this is the same. Yeah, it's just the same. I thought I was going somewhere new, but it's the same. Why? Says, because you brought the old crud. God says, I have a new thing for you. Oh, come on. God, and so he's got new stuff in your future. You can't take the old furniture into the new stuff. There's no space. Right? And so God tells us what to bring. Because there's things that you bring. He says, hey, bring the happy things, bring the good things, bring, meditate on. He says, think about only those things that are good, pure, holy, trustworthy, praiseworthy. Meditate only on those. Those are the things. He says, bring those with you in mm -hmm. your day. Mm -hmm. He says, the things that happened yesterday, he said, here's, and he actually tells us when to clean our house. He says, before the sun goes down, throw away all the anger, throw away all the bitterness every yeah. day, throw it all out. Yeah, every Cause, day. Because it's just going to spoil. It's just yeah. going to spoil. Take the tonight. trash out at night. Take that. That's a good. Because the way you wake up in the morning, that. it smells. That's a great. You ever do series. that? Like you, you get up in the morning, you're like, "Why does the kitchen smell?" Like, oh, it's because we forgot to take the trash out from dinner. Like you put right. some food in there, and now it's rotting. Take it out at night. That's a great. Take series. out the trash every night. Take out the trash every night. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's pray. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, that right now we're taking out the trash. We're shaking things off. We're letting bitterness go, hurts from the past, old betrayals, Lord. We're just letting it go. We're forgiving. We're, uh, Father God, we're praying for those who have rejected us, Lord, that we're not mad at them. We don't think down of them. We're not trying to get even with them. But, Lord, you're the great reconciler. We let you reconcile and settle all accounts. But, Father God, we're headed to a new place. And we don't want to be weighed down by the shackles of, of our past and the old things that don't matter. But, Father God, we want to be released that we might fly into the new things that you have for us and be able to run and not grow weary. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Watch this clip. The same word that drove the sea back and parted the Red Sea for those Israelites, the word ruach, it was that kind of wind. It was the spirit wind that set them free. In the same way, God's wind is there for us to bring liberty and freedom in our lives. In Mark chapter 6 and verse 45 is where we're going to be right now. And Jesus has just fed the thousands with some loaves and some fish. And 
And he's going up on a mountainside to pray, and he sends his disciples ahead of him to where they're headed. It says in verse 45, immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. So Jesus sent them. Sometimes Jesus is sending us somewhere new. In fact, a lot of times God is moving us from where we are to where he wants us to be. In other words, he's calling us to a new level, calling us to a new place. And it says that he sent them, and, they, and then he went, of course, he, 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 it says he go before me to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he sent the multitude away, so he's sending the people away, and when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. And then it goes on, now when evening came, now that word evening there is, means more like the middle of the night. The boat was in the middle of the sea. And he, Jesus, was alone on land. And then he saw them straining, say straining. straining. He saw them straining at rowing. For the wind was against them. He sent them knowing that they would be straining into the wind. He sent them knowing that the wind would be against them. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Just thumbs up. Be in church this weekend, wherever that might be. And uh, be blessed. Be Have blessed. a great week. <laughs> That's a perfect ending. <laughs> what is that show? <laughs> <laughs>